Hi guys, I hope you're all having a fun summer. It's supposed to get up to around 118 degrees today here in Palm Springs. So I'm looking forward to jumping in the pool. Marsha and Mason are coming over in a little bit. We're gonna go swimming and then we're gonna have lunch. I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna have for lunch. I bought a lot of stuff for salads. That's pretty much what I have every day for lunch is a really big salad. But Mason, I don't think he's real big on salads. He's a vegan. So I did pick up, uh, Jim and I went to the store this morning and I picked up some Impossible Burgers for him. It comes in a package of six, so I wanna try one as well. So we'll probably have Impossible Burgers. I'm just not sure at 118 degrees out if I'm gonna wanna fire up the grill and cook them outdoors. And I don't think the, the, the grill is going to be in the shade. I've got an umbrella, so it depends on if it's windy. If it's not windy, I could put the umbrella up and that'll probably shade the grill a little bit. And so I'm just going to kind of play it by ear. I remember the last time I talked to him about his uh, veggie burgers, he said that he normally just, I guess, fries them or cook, cooks them or fries them in a, in a skillet. I have a cast iron skillet, so maybe we'll do it that way. Maybe it'll be easier just to cook them that way. Now, if it were me alone, I would probably just put them in the microwave so maybe we'll do that I, I don't know I don't know I've never I haven't had this particular brand of, of vegan burger I've had a couple of the other brands that have been so-so and I've always just heated them up in the microwave so I don't know if you can do that with this brand as well but I guess I'll find out today so anyway we're gonna have some vegan burgers and salad oh and I finally decided I every year at least once a year pretty much I make potato salad. Now, it's a real pain and it takes a long time. It's very difficult. I, well, I shouldn't say it's difficult. It's not real difficult, but it just, it's time consuming. That's why I usually only make it once a year, but I love it. But as you know, it doesn't love me. I get really bad heartburn from anything with potatoes. And so I get heartburn from potato salad. But you know, earlier in the year, I switched my diet completely to get rid of anything that caused heartburn. And it lasted for a couple of months where I didn't have heartburn, it was great. And then all of a sudden, eating the same foods, I mean, with this new diet, which had completely gotten rid of, or pretty much had gotten rid of my heartburn, after about three, four months, my heartburn came back, even on the new foods, which there was nothing in any of the new things I was eating that typically would have caused uh, heartburn before. So I just realized my body just creates acid, acid reflux for whatever reason. So it doesn't really matter what I eat. Certain things make it worse, but pretty much I get acid reflux and heartburn every day, no matter what I eat. And I think I even mentioned to you, I get it sometimes from water, you know, like smart water, some of the smart water I, I get, at least it seems like I get it from the smart water. So I don't know what, what that's all about. So anyway, I've given up, totally given up on trying to get rid of my heartburn and I just take my, my heartburn pill every day. I know it's probably not that, the greatest, but it does keep it at bay. It uh, gets rid of the heartburn. It's just a, an over-the-counter uh, famidine, famidine from Walmart, and it does the trick. It does get rid of the heartburn, but I need to take one of those pills every single day. It's a 24-hour pill, so I only have to take one a day, but at this point, I'm, I'm kind of, I've, I've kind of thrown my hands up when it comes to trying to get rid of heartburn. Now, I'm sure some of you are probably saying, well, why don't you just buy the pre-made potato salad in the store? And that, that's a good question. And the reason is that I think it tastes awful. The pre-made potato salad that you buy in the store is pretty much also the same pre-made potato salad that you get when you go to a, a fast food restaurant or pretty much almost any restaurant. It's very soupy to me. It's very wet, very, it's very mushy. I mean, you're lucky if you can even find any little little tiny pieces of potato. It's just sort of like this potato mush or potato soup. And it's also very, very vinegary, very tangy. And I'm not really partial to that vinegary flavor. So I just don't like store-bought or restaurant-bought potato salad. I never have. I just really like my mom's potato salad. She used to make it quite often, you know, when I was growing up, and I thought it was great. It tended to be on the really dry side, and I really like, I think I probably mentioned this before in some of my videos, when it comes to food, I tend, most things I like really dry. We always laugh when we're watching these food shows 
on TV, these reality shows like, like MasterChef and whatever, people are always getting booted off the shows because you know they make their fish dry or they make this dry or they make that dry. And I'm like, that's exactly how I would want it. I mean, I would not, I don't like things moist and wet and damp. And you know, when it comes to food, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> and I know I'm kind of the, the oddball when it comes to that. I think Jim definitely likes uh, moist when it comes to food. I also, I don't add any salt or pepper. And so, where my mom did, but pepper causes kidney stones or can cause kidney stones, so I stay away from that. And I've gone off most, I try to just not eat salt at all in anything. I don't add salt to anything because most things are pretty salty anyway. So I do add pickles, uh, dill pickles and some dill pickle juice into the potato salad to give it a little, a little bit of moistness. And that juice and the pickles are very salty, so it adds some salt. So for me, that's enough. And I just figure if anyone wants to add salt, they can add their own salt. I do add a little bit of garlic powder. I think I used to add garlic salt a little bit, but I don't even do that anymore. So it's fairly bland, but you know, I, I put in mustard. There's quite a bit of mustard. That's kind of what makes it yellow. And that has kind of a salty taste to it as well. So it's not totally bland. For me, anyway. Now, maybe Marsha and, and Mason and Jim might disagree, <laughs> but they can always add their own uh, salt and pepper to it if they want. I just really wasn't in the mood to, to make it, to spend the time making it this year, and that's why I haven't made it so far. And even this morning, I wasn't even really sure if I wanted to spend the time, because it takes me probably a couple of hours. You know, by the time you peel the potatoes and boil the potatoes and hard boil the eggs, and then peel all the eggs, and that just... Lately, I don't know if it's the eggs or me, but it was taking me like an hour just to peel off all the, the shells. So that really turned me off of making this. Well, at the store this morning, Jim happened to buy, I guess, like a little six pack of, of hard boiled, pre hard boiled eggs. And I've never tried those before. And I thought, well, you know, let me just try that. At least the most difficult part of making this, I wouldn't have to deal with that. I could just buy the eggs already done. And so that's what I did. I'm trying those this time to see how they taste and see if they work out. So all of the ingredients for the potato salad cost me about $18. And that's the potatoes, one onion, and I really only use, use half, half of the onion. Celery, I only really use about half the celery stock. The eggs, mustard, mayonnaise. Since I only do this about once a year, both the mustard and mayonnaise are usually expired after a year, so I have to get new mustard and mayonnaise every year. <laughs> and pickles, jar pickles. I just pretty much go with all of the great value brands. So that keeps the price fairly low. So $18, not too bad because I make enough for the entire neighborhood. I figure if I'm gonna to go to all this effort to make it, I don't wanna make it just a tiny little portion for, for one, one barbecue. So I make enough to feed lots of people. There'll be plenty for, for me and Marcia and Michaela if she comes and Mason and Jim and anyone else who might happen to stop by. I think Bobby's probably staying at home and taking care of the dogs, but if he decides to come, there'll be plenty of potato salad for him as well. And so I'm sure we'll be eating potato salad for the entire week. For me, potato salad, at least the way that I make it, the way my mom make, made it, is an entire meal. I really don't even need to eat anything with it. But, you know, I can have uh, one of the veggie burgers with it, and that, that would be perfect. And as I mentioned, my mom used to make this growing up, and she always put black olives in the potato salad. So I thought you had to have black olives in potato salad. I just thought everybody made it that way. And then a couple of years ago, my mom's friend, Dorothy, said she had never heard of potato salad with black olives. And then I got to think about it. I realized, well, you know, my mom loved black olives. She loved all olives, and but especially black olives. And she just put them in and everything. About the only thing she didn't put them in was ice cream. And I wouldn't have been surprised if she added them to ice cream too. <laughs> she would just love black olives. So I think she just stuck them in and they taste great. And I, that's just the only way I'd ever had potato salad. Curious if any of you have had potato salad with black olives or any kind of olives. Until just, uh, until Dorothy told me this, I had no idea. I just thought that's how potato salad always came <laughs> with olives. And I know there are different types of potato salad. I don't know which, which one this is called or which one this is based on, if it's the German potato salad or something else. It's the kind with the, with the mustard. I think there's also potato salad that doesn't have any mustard, just the mayonnaise. So feel free to share your uh, potato salad recipes 
in the comments section or let us know what kind of potato salads you like. I'm assuming this is the most popular kind since this looks very much like the kind that you see in the stores or the restaurants, but I don't know, maybe it's not the most popular or maybe it just depends on where you live. So anyway, if I remember, and you know me and food, most of the time I forget to film it because I'm so busy entertaining people and serving the food or making the food or eating the food that I forget to film it. If I remember to film it, and nobody else in my family likes to film, so, so I end up having to do all the work and I have to do the filming too, or it doesn't get filmed. So if I remember to film once everyone gets here and we start eating, I'll show you what we decided to eat and how, what everything looks like. I won't film you, I'll just film your food. <laughs> I hear you wanna see them pretty inside. Yeah, I mean, I just can't believe these look like real burgers. Yeah. Coloring or whatever. Like this way? You don't have much on you, so you can't you know do any of the vegetables like or anything. Like this. Any yeah. of the I other vegetables. Like mm -hmm. I know right. you can't eat the potato salad. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't think about it. Oh, yeah, you should add some. So you don't, don't like <laughs> other things with it? You just like the burger salad? Was I supposed to? No, I don't. I didn't do anything to my hair on purpose because I was it getting looks in the fantastic pool. like that. Like, it looks really nice. It's imagine, great. Imagine, it looks like my, just, imagine my potato salad. It looks like you just came back from... Uh, I don't want to be in a video today. All right, no video. So thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you all next time.